Hey, 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 beautiful people. It's Tanya Weeders, ECMG Creative Studios. Hope all is well. Happy New Year to all of you that we didn't get a chance to speak to. It is February 3rd, 2020, and we just wanted to tell you that we are here to do an update on our importing a schedule from Excel into Outlook Calendar. We're going to update it. It's been about three years since we've done it, and we would like to thank um, all of you who have actually looked at the video. Um, some of you over and over again, we see you, uh, but we thank um, specifically Arveen Kumar Moses, who actually asked about something that we need to discuss. Um, do you know how to put notifications into Excel so that it will translate into Outlook? I'm sure you don't. I didn't know either. Um, and we're going to show you how we're able to do that quote unquote we put that in air quotes first off we want to say thank you so much to our friends over at syndrome music right here on youtube thank you for this wonderful music bed that i am quite frankly addicted to um also we would like to uh, extend uh, so much thanks for all of you who have liked the video shared it multiple times and have seen it as well at the top of the year or since the top of the year uh our analytics let us know that that um, a thousand people have already viewed this in two months. So um, we're going to update this and then we're going to hinge our cart <laughs> to this train and move on into 2020. We'd like to let you know that we're operating on uh, Microsoft Office 365, just in case you're wondering. Also, what we would like for you to do is to turn off any kind of distractions because what we would like you to be able to do is once you learn what to do, that you actually start doing it immediately after watching this. Two reasons. Number one, when you implement what you're learning, you are more likely to implement that into an everyday sort of occurrence. And that's something that we want you to do because the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The easier it becomes, the more productive you become. And that's what we want. Um, the second part of why it is that you should listen to it is because it's statistic statistically um, found out that um, when you do this, you retain it. You retain it longer. You retain it um for the long term and that's something that um all of us can stand to do it's just to be a little bit more productive this year um our theme is really about simplifying clarifying quantifying and then absolute execution that's what we are about if we can help anybody to do that then you know our job is done here remember to like share and subscribe and turn on your notifications so when we do actually come with new content then you will be ready for it all also, for those of you who stick around to the end, uh, we are going to give you a hack that is really something, it's like a jewel hidden in plain sight. We all use it every day, but did you know that you can use it to onboard new clients and you didn't even know that? So let's hop over into uh, Excel and uh, into um, Outlook as well so we can show you. So let's address Kumar's question first. All right. And the short answer to your question is, can we um, actually set up notifications in Excel to be exported into Outlook? The short answer is yes. The long answer is no. <laughs> Here it is. Um, full disclosure, what we did was we reverse engineered this. Um, we actually did uh, all of our uh, scheduling in uh, Outlook first. And then what we did was we went to our file and if this will work for me, uh, we went into file and we went into, come on, what's happening? went into file open and export and then import export and everything that we created in calendar you see as it's checked off here we wanted to export and we exported that into a file correct because that's what we wanted to find out what it is that we were missing um in order to get what we needed to get to move on right but in however comma that didn't work all right so let me show you what we mean when you're working in 
uh, outlook is very important to me. Well, I'm going to let you know, it's very important in terms of productivity and slashing your time in half is that you let the software work as little as possible um, in terms of having to figure out what it is that you want. Meaning the software works off of what you give it to work off of, right? So if you go into the system and you will see that your headers here is something that's already defined and that if you name your headers according to the descriptions that Outlook provides, it's easier and it's that much faster to get things to start working because all of the information from this section all the way down, doesn't matter whether you go down 10,000 cells, it's information that you've provided, but you already know with absolute confidence that these uh, top categories or specific uh, headers, if you will, are already predefined as according to Outlook, right? So when we exported this, we found out that if we wanted to actually have um, our notifications made available to us, that we would have to include these here. Now, the other one, ones from start date all the way through to the description is paramount. It's the same thing as we did in 2017 and the subsequent years, right? But if you want your notifications, you'll have to have your busy status, show time, reminder date, and then you're going to have to have uh, this section reminder on off. And instead of on or off, you're going to say true for on and false for off. All right. So I believe if you have nothing in this column, then it will automatically set to true, not to false. All right. So having said that, we did all this and here's a result of what happened. What had happened was... We're going to shut off our calendar and we'll go to February finals. So it seems as if it's identical to this. Our dates are 100% sure they are um, correct, but no, that I just changed everything else. If you hover over them in terms of wanting to be reminded, uh, everything is 15 minutes, right? And I don't know about you, but when I'm doing certain things, I need way more than 15 minutes in order to be reminded. All right. So I just wanted to let you know if you want to look any further into actually having this um, done in terms of setting up your notifications in Excel, you're probably going to have to work in the advanced feature of Visual Basic, which is something that it will take, you know, quite some time, uh, quite a bit of a learning curve if you don't know or aren't familiar with that situation if you're not familiar with that all right so like i said i don't like a lot of long videos i want you to be able to get in and get it done you know what i'm saying so we're going to bounce back to our excel <laughs> and i just wanted to show you how we got here from or yeah here from there and here's our there in excel so let me show you how this is done right so what I did was we took a few dates in February and there are a few things that we need to have done in February that are pretty much set in stone for each and every month. And so what we did was we just took our dates from um, February 6th all the way down to uh, around about the 21st. Uh, nope, the latest one is the 28th, right? And there are some dates in between here that we have procured because we have some dates that we're doing um each quarter in terms of conferences workshops etc cetera, etc cetera, right other than that there are some things here i'm sorry i'm rubbing my eyes there are some things here that need to be um they need to be scheduled each and every month they're written in stone and so let me show you what they are. Um, we have some blog content that we want to put up. We also have some video uh, and blog vlogs that are going up as well. We have some paid ads and retargeting ads um, that's going on uh, at multiple 
mm, offers are being done so it's quite a bit that's going on here so like i said we want to turn on our notifications uh, to be reminded um and like for this information here it doesn't need to be we don't need to be notified of this because we're working on these constantly all right so the best way to quarterback this shout out to the chiefs um <laughs> Super Bowl champions 2020. Um, what we wanted to let you know is that the best way to quarterback this, the way we found, is to take your dates for the current month, right? And the dates that you know that they're going to be recurring, all you do is you point, you set them up or you schedule them for the current month. And then once you import them into Outlook, then you go up and you actually um, you start to set up your uh, notifications there first and then you create recurrences for the rest of the year so that those um, reminders will carry over throughout the rest of the year okay so what i mean by that is simply this because you're basically doing the same thing that you did back in 2017 but the software has updated so how did i get my file um into or my csv file um from excel over into outlook very simple you go to file you go to open and export then go to import export click the button and then what you do is import from another program or file select next and then comma separated values which is just a text file select next and then what you do is you go into your browser and you select the file that coincides with uh, what you just named the file in Excel as a CSV file. And once you do that, you go to the next and then you assign it where you want that destination to go. And then you select next. We've already done that. And that's how we got <laughs> here from there. All right. So what we want to do let's say for example we only have um this says two days right now i'll show you just how to do that so we select this and once we select this item you'll see now instead of having to double click on this have another window open up go through all of the jargon all you need to do is go to the ribbon in the sky right here and you will set your reminder for however many days you'd like so for me i just need two days for this one because this is scheduled to go down um in third on thursday so i just need a few days let's say two days from thursday so this is going to notify me tomorrow right and so what happens is once you do that um, you would want to leave that as it is because this is only for this month. But seeing as this is a recurrence, let me jump down to March and see what happens March. On the 6th of March, if you hover over, come on now here. If you hover over, you should see, come on now you see that it's two days i don't need two days notice in march so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this i'm going to go up here into the ribbon in the sky and we're going to set this for a week in advance we're going to set this as a recurrence right and then we're going to have this every month from now until February 6, 2021, right? Okay. And so what should have happened, if you hover a week from this date, I'm going to be notified that you better get ready to drop this blog, 
All right. So let's jump down into month number three, which is April. So here on April, we should hover here and we'll see that I get a one week reminder. Now, that is the quickest way that we know so far that you can begin to create recurrences throughout your calendar. All right. So we just wanted to let you know that that's the easiest way, way that we were able to do it. And if you can see, um, I wish we had an icon where you can see the whole year. But basically, this is already carried out. My whole calendar is done. Um, all of the hard dates that we need to have here, including um, our monthly benchmarking, our weekly storm sessions, everything is together. And that's something that we wanted to do. It's nice, it's cohesive, it's nice and it's neat. All right. So if you have any questions, post them up. If you have another way in terms of uh, setting up your notifications from uh, Excel, uh, please let us know. The only way we know, again, is to do that within the visual basic, which is a little bit more advanced. All right. So as promised, I told you guys how much time do we have? Oh, okay. 15. So let me take you into email. All of us use our email every single day, every single day without fail. Okay. Every single day. So create a new email. Now, why am I going to email? Did you not know that you can ask for referrals every single day? No fuss, no, you know, fuss and no fuss. Um, you can do it through your email signature. Love our work. Refer them to us today. Well, what you can say is refer new clients. To us today and then if you can figure out how to summarize what your brand or business does in 10 words or less you are cooking with gas all you would do is go into your signatures <laughs> every day every day <laughs> so what you want to do is provide a link right and when you provide a link Basically, this is not how it looks. Oh my goodness. What it says here is, hey, Tanya, here's um, a business that could use your expertise. And then it's routed to the email. They don't have to do anything except click the email, uh, put the information there. And once you have that info, you have a lead. Now, whether that lead qualifies or not, that's another story. And if you want me to go into that, feel free to let me know. So that's your tip about how you can onboard clients sooner rather than later using something that you use every single day without any fuss or any hassle. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. And again, um, if you know of any way to do this, just post it up and we will check it out. And if it's someone who's already um, done this on YouTube or otherwise, we have no problem with sharing the love. OK, so thank you once again. We appreciate your time and have a blessed day. Bye bye. Look at this. Tell me that it don't taste like butter. Tell me that it don't taste like butter. Okay. Taking that out. 